Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. That every chain is broken. Oh, that through the truth of the Word of God, as we apply it, as we take it, as we get a hold of it, and as we're renewing our mind according to it, as we're speaking it and applying it, nothing can hold us back anymore. Nothing can hold us in bondage anymore. And we thank you so much that we are free generation. We are free in you, free to do as you want to do, free to move with your spirit, free to do whatever <laughs> you ask us to do, Father. Oh, and the ability to do so is given from you. And we want to worship you for that. We want to honor you for that. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we sometimes we sing th so songs like that. <laughs> well, I'm a little challenged speaking some English this morning. Okay. So song, songs like that. <laughs> no, songs. Now my iPad doesn't want to open. Now what is this here? This is funny. Okay, anyway. <laughs> sometimes we sing songs like that. And we're just singing them. Or we're thinking like, I am not in bondage. What are you talking about? I'm not addicted to drugs. I'm not addicted to alcohol. I'm not having any major issues in my life. I'm a free person. But what we don't realize is how often we are allowing the thoughts of the world, how often we are allowing the, the opinions of others, how often we are allowing circumstances to dominate our thought life, and they're taking us captive, and we're acting according to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for some of your heads going like, mm -hmm. I know we don't want to admit it, but we all deal with that. That's why the Bible talks about the fact that we need to renew our mind through the truth of the Word of God. And I have actually wanting to talk to you this morning about that you are important. I will have a very simple message this morning. But I want you to know that you are important. You're important to God. You are important to each other. And God has actually said some wonderful things about us. And I really believe that a lot of Christians are really bound and they're not really free to walk in what God has for them because they don't understand how important they are. They don't mean to, okay? And if you talk to them on a Christian talk level, do you know what I mean with that? Yeah? They will give you all the right answers. But when we really follow each other around during the day, and I don't mean this be meaning. Okay, but if we really would watch it, we are often falling back into the old way of thinking about ourselves. And we are moved by how we feel. We're moved on how what others have said about us and how circumstances look like. And because of that, we're paralyzed. We don't move the way we need to move. We're not truly as free as we could be and should be and our God wants us to be because Christ has paid that price for that. In Psalms 139, you all know that scripture. It's a very famous scripture. In verse 14, it says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, Lord, and that my, soul, my and my soul knows that well. Ooh. Okay. So really, I think it starts with knowing that God thinks great thoughts about us, about you. Okay. I on purpose did not say we are important. I on purpose said you are important. I'm talking to you individually. Yes, I talk to us as a group. But individually, we need to know that, that we are wonderfully and marvelously made in God's eyes. And that God looks at us and he looks at you and he says, hey, wow, you're important to me. You are great. This is awesome. Hmm? When was the last time you looked in the mirror and you said, wow! <laughs> Some of you didn't feel like that this morning at all, right? <laughs> you were like, oh. <laughs> but that's not the way how God looks at us and that's not the way how we should look at us. Everybody... And you personally are so important that God actually is not just saying you're important on how I have created you and how I look at you. I also need you. 
wow. I mean, that took me a while to get that. I don't know about you, but I sometimes, you know, as a human being, we sometimes, we just live in our own little world. We look at our own little self. We're trying to look at ourselves the way God looks at us, hopefully more and more every day. But we're still like, yeah, but God cannot use me. What does he want to do with me? I'm really not important. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 12, the Bible says, For the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. You have heard that scripture, talking about the body. And I have mentioned this here before. And I was really interested that I actually found this morning when I restudied some of that stuff and looked at that again um, and prayed for the service, I actually saw that last year I spoke on the same subject. I didn't even know. Because I'm speaking at so many churches, I can't remember where I spoke what, okay. <laughs> but I was quite amazed. And I thought, like, oh, okay, Lord, if you're bringing this message back, if you're bringing this subject back, and he had specifically told me what he wants me to talk about while we had a prayer meeting for our ministry, okay. He gave me specific points and scripture references. So I knew he wanted this message to come out. And so here in 1 Corinthians 12, he's talking about that we are one body, but we are many members in this body. But my my body doesn't function apart from each other. It needs everything, right? And we do know that very well. If one part of our body doesn't function very well, the rest of the body is suffering under this, right? I always use the example of when you hit your little toe. Have you ever done that? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right? And I mean, it, it feels like that it's, that it's hindering your whole body, even so you just hit your little toe. But it is important. In verse uh, 21, it says, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of you. Whoa. Okay? Go back to verse 18, it says, But now has God set the members, every one of them, and the body as, he, as it has pleased him. Hmm. So now we see a few things here. We see, first of all, we are body. We need each other. God is a part of this body. Christ is the head, right? We are the body. So it says here that the eye cannot say that it has no need of somebody else. So God cannot look at us and cannot say, I don't need you. And we cannot look at each other and say, I don't need you either. Okay? And then it says, God has placed each and every one of us into that body in the way how he wanted to place us. Hmm. So that would mean we should actually accept something. Yeah, but I don't like that. I don't want that. Sorry. <laughs> My little toe doesn't get to choose to be the little toe. Hmm? My nose didn't get to choose to be the nose. Okay? Are you you getting the point? Are you following me? I know I'm teaching you a little bit this morning. I'm going somewhere with this because I want us to develop an awareness of what God is doing. Because everybody is needed and everybody is important to God. So when I look at you, I could pick anybody out of here and say, hey, wow, you are important to me. See, I can do this with Marlena today because we're matching. (laughs) You understand what I'm saying? And that's something which we have to understand because if we do that, we work together differently, we will treat each other differently, and we will have a better understanding on how we can relate to each other. And please, I am not bringing this message because I'm thinking like there's strife in the family, there are problems in the family. Not at all. I really believe that God has a desire for us to see things, uh, things through his eyes and to bring us on an, into a new dimension. Mm-hmm. Let, can I say, should I say that again? <laughs> he wants us to see things through his eyes and bring us into a new dimension. He is never just satisfied with us just being where we're at right now because he has so much more. He has so much more. So if everybody is needed and everybody is important, then everybody has a supply to give. Ooh. Oh, now go to Ephesians. My most favorite 
book in the Bible? <laughs> I would think so, because I turn to it to most. Ephesians, in chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Ephesians 3, 7, because of time, I printed all these scriptures into my Bible, uh, into my iPad, so that I can go doo -doo 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 a little bit quicker through here, okay? <laughs> it's a little bit challenging to preach a message in this short period of time. Even so, I make the students do it, so I can do it. <laughs> It says here in verse 7, chapter 3, Wherefore I, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Whoa. You might say, yeah, but I'm not made a minister. This is not just talking about a pulpit ministry. This is talking about all of us being made a minister within the kingdom, a carrier of the message of Jesus Christ, somebody who has received a grace, a divine ability to carry out that which you are called to do. So if he has placed you within the body, he has graced you to do within the body. Wow. Wow. See, because of that, we can actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be bold, okay? We can never, never sit in church and say, this is too much for me. <laughs> this was a hard week, you don't understand that, Monica. This is just too much if you want me to help with this now. And we all have done it. But we have no right to do it because God says, I've graced you. I have empowered you. I have equipped you. I have given to you what you need in order for you to do. So we don't have to do this out of our natural ability. So really, if you are needed from God, then he also looks at you and he said, the supply, that grace which I have entrusted to you, please, I need it back so that we can actually build the kingdom. Because I don't know if you realize this, and we are strong on this in this church. And you might have uh, maybe lately not heard many messages on this, but really, we are still on this earth to build the kingdom of God. That's the only reason why we're here. I thought to make money. Now, you make money so that you can build the kingdom. I thought to have children, yes, so that actually the body of Christ will grow and there is another carrier of the message of Jesus Christ proclaiming the good news in the world. That's the only reason why we're still on earth. We have no other purpose for being still on earth than helping to carry the message of Jesus Christ out to this world and to actually build the kingdom. So God is so cool, I love it, because he says, if that is the case, I don't let you do this by yourself, I am giving you my grace, I'm giving you my supply, so that you can actually do. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, from whom the whole, through Christ it's talking, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and accompanied by that which every joint supplies. So we as the body... 1 Corinthians 12, that's where we started. We are coming together, we are joined together, and we're giving our supply according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Sounds just like Ephesians 3, 7, I was just reading. And we are making the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So if you and I do our part, the body of Christ, the church, the kingdom of God will grow. And we will be edified in love to each other. It's interesting, the word supply, I looked that up, and that word actually means to make something needed or wanted available to somebody else. Wow. So really, I could say it this way. God looks at you, and I look at you, and we look at each other, and we say, I ha you have something which I need and which I want, and please make it available. So if God says you are important and he has equipped us so that we can actually live in the fullness of that, then he's actually looking at you and he says, hey, would you please be so kind to make your supply available? Yeah. Would you please be so kind and make your, apply, your, your supply available? Would you please give me what I have given to you? So that it can actually bring the whole body together in the fullness to where it should be. Yeah. Woo. 
See, the beauty of not being the pastor of the church is that you sometimes can say some things where people get mad at the pastor, but if you get mad at me, I don't care. <laughs> really, guys, honestly, I really feel like the Spirit is telling us as a church, I want you to step into this, wake up, give your supply, and don't think it is little. Because whatever God gave us is too important. And if we start giving it in the fullness, then we together, as a healthy body, will go, we will grow. That's what Ephesians is saying. You give you supply, you, 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 me. And together, when we bring it together, we go, and growth is an advantage for all of us. Because we will not just grow in numbers, we will grow in depth. We will grow in our relationship to God. We will grow in revelation knowledge. We will grow in anything which Christ has for us. But it will only happen if we all are willing to give this path which God has for us. (laughs) So we are important for each other. We are important for God. Wow. Do you understand that? God looks at you and he says, you are so important to me. You're important as an individual and you're important within the body of Christ. I love you and I have equipped you with anything which you will need in order for you to do what I need you to do. Sometimes people ask me, Monica, how do you do that? I mean, I was just, you know, I was two weeks in the Ukraine and I have literally, I mean, we arrived and we had one meeting after another, after another, after another. We were traveling hundreds of kilometers in between. Often I took night trains. I was meeting with pastors. I was being, doing prayer groups. I was teaching in Bible school. We had Holy Ghost meetings. I mean, I went from one boom, 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 boom to the next, okay? So I fly home. And the next morning, I'm back in the office. I work all week. I drove last night. I was on, on Friday, I drove to Coburg to open a new campus. I came back yesterday evening at 9 o'clock. And this morning, I'm in the church preaching. And some people say, like, how do you do that? This is way too much. Says who? It's all in question of here. I think the Spirit was actually setting something up here through this song. It's all in here. It's a question of how do I look at things? Do I draw on that grace which he has given to me? Are you still in Ephesians 4? Let's go quickly to Ephesians 4 and let's look into, um, into verse 7 and 8 quickly. But unto every one of us, every one of us, is given a grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Therefore, he has said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captives, and he gave gifts unto man. So it's given to each and every one of us. So what you will have to do is to draw on that. It's basically saying, yes, thank you, Lord, it's available for me. I take this, and because you have made it available, I am giving my supply. I'm willing to be a part of this. Wow, this is awesome. Thank you, Lord. You have to understand that this is a privilege God could have chosen a different way. But he has looked at me, he has looked at you, he has looked at every believer on this earth, and he has said, I have chosen to work through you. So we have the privilege of serving together with the Most High God. Wow. And I really heard these words in prayer. I heard the Lord saying, thank you. I heard him literally say, thank you for being willing to give your supply. Thank you. Many, many of you, you have been faithful giving your supplies day in, day out, and doing it, and doing it. In rain, unloading a van, right? Sweat it through before the service even started. Cutting your fingers on boxes you carried, which I did many times, because I know how that feels. Okay, <laughs> You know, rolling out the, the, the sound cables, r- crawling on the floor to just set them right and to tape them down so that we don't trip over it. Doing all these things. I mean, I'm just picked something out right now, okay? You understand. But you have been faithful of all these years. You're doing it over and over and over and over again. And I heard the Lord say, uh, saying to me that I should tell you, thank you. Thank you for being willing to do that. 
Thank you for being, being willing to give your supply. Thank you. But I also think that the Lord wants to shake us a little bit. Because some of us, we have allowed our involvement to limit us to thinking bigger. What do I mean with that? Yeah, I'm already doing something. That should be enough. Okay? So really what we need to do is to ask the Lord if we need to make some adjustments. I mean, I'm serving the Lord for many, many years. I got saved since I was six years old and I was always involved in the church. And I had to make many adjustments over the years. Right? Because there are changes. And sometimes we need to make adjustments because we only allow God in a limited way to use us. Maybe we have told him, this is what I'm willing to do, but that I will not. I know you have never done that. I did that before, okay? <laughs> so, but please hear his thank you for being willing to do and check your heart if you might have to make some adjustments. I'm not saying that that is true for everybody. I just think that there are some people in here where God is looking at you and he says, please make some adjustments for your own good so that that grace which I have entrusted to you can actually come to the surface and will be used and the whole body of Christ will be built up and the body will be strong. And I also believe that there are some in here where you will have to allow the Lord first time to really use your supply. You have thought he cannot use me. You thought what I have to give is too little. It's not enough. I don't have gifts like everybody else. That's not true. He has graced everybody. That's what that scripture said. So please make yourself available to him. Will you? Promise me? Let him talk to you and allow him to work through you. Because if you do, you will see some wow things happening within your life. Because as you make your supply available to the body, the rest of the body makes their supply available to you. And together, wow, not just for the local church, for the overall kingdom and these supplies coming together will do something for you personally. It's very, very powerful. Okay, can I have the worship team please up here? I know this is a little bit sobering. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, as a, as a believer, we need to do on a regular basis of self-evaluation. How am I doing? Is there some things where I need to make some adjustments? And I constantly find things where I need to make adjustments. And then I'm done beating myself down and say, how can you then? No, it's like awesome. Thank you, Lord, for showing me. And I will make these adjustments because you helped me. Awesome. Thank you. Because it's just a regular part of normal growth, right? A child is not beating itself for growing. <laughs> Please not. <laughs> we want them to grow. It's just the same with us spiritually and in our development and in our relationship to the Lord. Let's do a regular self-examination and realize, oh, I'm a little bit weak here. I need to pay more attention to this. Or in this case, what we're talking about today, see, oh, I need to make some adjustments on how I give my supply. Or I need to make my supply available. Or you might do a self-examination and say, thank you, Lord, for telling me thank you because I really give it already and it, it's a great joy that I can. Okay? Let's get up together. And I want you personally to talk to the Lord about it. I cannot do this for you. I can just do that for myself. Okay? Let's just check your own heart and be honest. And you, some of you might have to make a dedication and might have to say, yes, Lord, I want to make this adjustment. Okay? Let's do that. Father, I thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Father, for allowing us to be a part of your body, for allowing us to build the kingdom together with you. Thank you that you speak to our lives and that you always, always, always good to us. And I want to tell you, Father, we are here. And we want to be available to build your kingdom. We are here. We are your servants. Thank you for allowing us to build the kingdom with you. And I thank you that you speak to everybody's heart right now. And Father, you know that we have to make some adjustments sometimes. And I thank you that you help each and every one of 
who needs to make an adjustment, who might have to allow a greater portion of that grace to work and flow through them. Father, that those which have thought that they are not important enough with what they have to give, that, that's, that they hold it back and said, that's not needed. That they do not hold back anymore, but that they're willing to open up and let go and let it flow. I thank you so much for that. Thank you, you're speaking to us, Father. Hallelujah. We love you. And we want to dedicate our lives to you and say, Father, here we are. Use us. Send us. We're willing to do what you want us to do. We're not holding back. Because we believe in what you have placed within us is so much greater than anything which the world can offer. Anything which the couch can give us. Anything greater than the TV can, can minister to us. Oh, oh, when we get to minister to each other and to minister to you. Thank you for that privilege, Father. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Can you sing something? Anything which has hold you back. <laughs> Anything. It's broken. Oh, yes. I'm not sure some of you in here, you might never have actually asked Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior. You might have been coming to church. You might have heard the message. You might be arguing with yourself on the inside about it. But your brain is not fully comprehending what is going on. Please. He's knocking at your heart's door. And he's saying, I want to come in there. I want to change your life around. And this is nothing which you can actually grasp with your brain. This is something which you have to allow with your heart. Just, just you know, it's like when you get introduced to a new person, you're not getting introduced with your brain and first think about, oh, who is they and what's going on? And I need to try to figure them out before I talk to them. Allow him that you can get to know him. Allow it, please. Okay? So if you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you never have prayed that prayer of saying, Jesus, please become our Lord and Savior, then we will close the service here. We will have some coffee, tea together. Then just come on up front here. There's some wonderful people up front here who would love to introduce you to him. Also, if you have never been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence in speaking in other tongues, do not miss this wonderful gift. You want that because you're connecting with him on a different dimension. <laughs> Don't miss out on that. And if you have been running away from him and you think like, I'm really not good enough and I'm not important, Please, don't listen to that lie. You might want to come up front as well so that we can pray with you and just really reconcile your relationship with the Heavenly Father again so that you can step boldly before His throne and receive Him and receive from Him and move forward with Him. He loves you. Okay, look to your neighbor and just tell him, He loves you. Ooh, then look at yourself and say, He loves me. Woo! Hallelujah! Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. Have a wonderful, blessed week. Stay around, fellowship a little bit with the others who are coming for the next service. And don't forget to make your supply available. Amen? We love you very much. God bless you.